All right, everyone, there are a number of candidates that I've complained about within the GOP's field for 2024, notably people like Mike Pence. Mike Pence was always terrible. He also torpedoed his own campaign, which was very funny to watch, actually, at the time. Hey, it's uh, the U.S. is not my responsibility. Ukraine is. That line didn't go over so well, now, did it? Or you look at, uh, you look at for example, uh, you look at Ron DeSantis. Well, DeSantis has done some good things, especially in a gubernatorial sense. He really trolled the left with, with uh, the Martha's Vineyard thing. He went after Disney, mostly successfully, by the way, at least outside of court. In court, he gets, uh, he gets curb stomped, but then Disney relents afterwards and says, well, we're going to forsake some of this wokeness stuff and get back to the business of making cartoons. Well, they're still doing the DEI thing, but it was funny when the CEO had to come out and publicly disclaim the concept. Though he has some selling points, but then he makes mistakes and, and gaffes and, and is, you know, not very charismatic. And I've complained of that, too. Uh, there, there are others because the field originally was like 14, 15 people. And there are always a couple of also rans who nobody even reported on. Like nobody knew that Doug Burgum was in other than me, apparently. I, like he, he never cracked one percent. Nobody knows that Asa Hutchinson is still in. In fact, I don't even know. It's a Schrodinger's campaign. He said he'd be reconsidering his viability after Thanksgiving, but I think he's still in. Although if he dropped out, there is a possibility that nobody bothered to notify me, and I'm not exactly Googling Asa Hutchinson on a daily basis. But the worst candidate by far in the field is Nikki Haley, bar none. Um, if Ron DeSantis has a terrible habit of making strategic errors, and Mike Pence is Judas Iscariot 2.0, Nikki Haley manages to combine gaffes and lies and na naturalistic, just pure evil with warmongering and everything else, combines it all into one bolus, and that's basically her campaign. Link in the description is a series of lies from just one political event, the debate with Ron DeSantis. There are like seven or eight of them. Listen, this is by DeSantis' own campaign, but this is his official handle on Twitter. I'm not going to archive it because you probably want to watch the video. The one that sticks out the most and really should be the most damning with Republican voters, you would think, and apparently New Hampshire hasn't gotten the memo. If the polling there is any indicator, I still think she loses the state, by the way. But, you know, at the very least, she came comes a little bit closer. Going to do better than DeSantis in Iowa. That's a near guarantee. The biggest one, though, was on the transgender bathroom bill. She torpedoed that in her political capacity in South Carolina. That is the truth. On the debate stage, she pre pretended that that never happened. She's got this habit of getting caught on video or audio having said one thing and then later she'll say something totally different. The reason is that when she's already in office and not running for the presidency, she wanted to take up a more moderate line to keep her job. When she decided to go national, she decided to swing some of her views to the right. I would know that it wasn't that long ago that she said unequivocally that she was in favor of parents being the ones to decide with gender transitioning for minors, for example. She's not particularly pro-gun. She's not, she's said uh, also, this is another big one. She's like, well, we, I'm, I'm, the, the border is of great import to me and I've, I've, we need to secure the border. But she's again on record as being lackluster on that issue. Um, standard and poor, basically, uh, to use that jargon. And that's Nikki Haley. And, and I mean, she's she's not even a flip-flopper. A uh, flip-flopper would be you had a position, you change it, and then you have to sort of explain why you changed your position. Nikki Haley mode is you change your position and then you pretend you never had the other position in the first place. Kerry would be an example. He, he was famous for this. Is uh, on the internet. I remember at the time there were presidential dance moves. It was like a website. And one of uh, John Kerry's was the flip-flop, and he was belly-flopping on the floor, and I thought this was humorous. Uh, I can't remember what George W.'s were at the time. It was less memorable than that one. I just thought that was hilarious, because the news used that term 10,000 times and uh, drilled it into my head. It wasn't even propaganda when they were saying that. Nikki Haley doesn't flip-flop. She twists herself into a pretzel and rolls around like a tumbleweed. <laughs> like Anton's tumbleweed in the breezeway. Uh, I mean, I've never quite seen anyone be so disingenuous before. It's almost like she's a psychopath. And so literally, like, depending on who she's talking to, she just ever changes her position. And she doesn't quite realize that video exists. And so she gets called out and caught out in these lies over and over and over again, while also peddling a very war-frenzied uh, uh, campaign as far as foreign policy, an America-last policy for domestic issues, 
and somehow there are still people that support her. Somehow, inexplicably, she's more popular than Ron DeSantis. I don't know whether that speaks to the stupidity of a block of voters or whether it speaks to DeSantis just really lacking any personality as a candidate. I'd certainly prefer Ron DeSantis over her. At the very least, he's accomplished something. Martha's Vineyard alone is worth more than Nikki Haley's entire political career, for example. Uh, but, I mean, the fact that she's uh, running a fairly close second, especially in New Hampshire, I guess speaks to the power of massive political advertisements. You remember the hot mic moment with Christie the other day, was saying it was $65 million of ads targeting one state and one state only. Because Haley knew, I'm not going to appeal to those Iowa voters. I apparently don't appeal to voters in my own home state because I'm 35 goddamn points behind Trump there too. I'll just pick off New Hampshire because it's small and that's why it was chosen. It's cheaper to influence and it's still important, of course, because it's the first primary. Uh, that's That seems to be her goal. And when she probably loses there, I didn't think her campaign pretty much withers up and dies at that point. Uh, by the way, Vance about DeSantis. I don't know that Ron DeSantis will actually try to do a joint thing with Nikki Haley. Um, I don't think that he would want to play second fiddle to her, and I think there might be some genuine animus between them. I've got a more a better opinion of Ron DeSantis than many Trump fans do. Because they're taken in by the bants and stuff like that. But come on, Trump and DeSantis spar all the time, all the candidates do. When they don't, that's the real mystery. When a candidate ignores another candidate, that, that's when you know that things are getting real. Donald Trump hits everyone. And pretty much everyone hits back, except one notable candidate, who is also a confederate in the field like Chris Christie is, and I've already warned people of that. Nikki Haley, though, only thing she's honest about is that she wants to blow up third world children and spend trillions of your taxpayer money doing so. What do you want to bet that if Nikki Haley were elected, we'd bend up back in Afghanistan? Well, we've got to clean up the mess of the withdrawal. She, she can hit two birds with one stone. As Trump broke her to withdrawal and then Biden fucked it up. She can pretend that it wasn't the, the fuck up for Biden only and then come and say, well, we need to fix it. So we're going back into Kabul. We've reached an agreement with the with the legally recognized remnant of what used to be the Afghan government. You know, we got this letter from the prison cell of the, the former deputy chief of ironworking unions or something like that. And that authorizes us to go in because he's the legitimate leader of Afghanistan now or something like that. You know, uh, what's his name? Uh, in exile, I think, right now in another country. Uh, was it Kyrgyzstan or something like that? Yeah, he decided he wanted to be leader again, so we're going to supply the firepower because Taliban evil or something like a women's rights. That's the other thing. Her campaign at times is literally, I have a vagina. Well, congratulations, representing 50% of the world population, you have female reproductive organs. This is not, by the way, actually a selling point within the GOP, and I don't know why she bothers to trot it out. She almost sounds like Hillary Clinton. It takes a woman to do a man's job. Come on, she's also a straight-up feminist. Why are people supporting this goofball? That's about all. Peace out.